After Godzilla vs. Biollante failed to draw audiences, Toho was left wondering how to make the franchise more appealing to a wider audience while still continuing with the current, more serious approach that was quickly defining this new era. To accomplish this, it was decided it was time to bring back one of the classic monsters from Godzilla's pantheon of foes. And after some consideration, eventually the studio settled on one of the most popular and recognizable of them all, King Ghidorah. And so for the first time since 1972, Godzilla and Ghidorah were given a rematch, this time under very different circumstances, in the delightfully bonkers Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. After a UFO is seen flying over Japan, its occupants are revealed to be humans from the distant future, who have come to save the nation from an impending and catastrophic attack from Godzilla by traveling to the past and erasing him from history. They succeed, and in his place, King Ghidorah is born, a monster controlled by the Futurians, whose actual goal is to destroy present-day Japan, who have become a world superpower in the future. Seeing no other option, Japan has to figure out a way to birth Godzilla back into existence with the hope that he'll save them from total subjugation. After the more grounded approach of the previous two entries in the Heisei era, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah sees the series take a sharp turn towards the more fantastical concepts that had defined the Showa era. Time travel, dinosaurs fighting in World War II, and roller skating robots are just some of the ridiculous things you can expect to see, and it's all crammed into a really engaging science fiction plot that continues to take Godzilla seriously while still embracing the franchise's inherent cheesiness. And this combination makes for an immensely entertaining thrill ride of a movie with enough twists and turns that you'll never stop wondering what happens next. Despite the title, though, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah is actually more of an origin story than a versus movie. The time travel plot is used to finally give audiences a definitive origin story of the famous monster, revealing him to have been a rather docile creature before a bunch of men with machine guns made him mad, and he ends up suffering for it. This adds a valuable sense of pathos to Godzilla, while also further complicating his connection to Japan. Indeed, for as silly as this movie is, at its core, it is an examination of Japan's complex relationship with Godzilla. More so than ever before, his dual nature is on full display, at once both savior and destroyer. It's a fascinating idea to explore, and it is that idea that gives the film its thematic and emotional punch amidst all the sci-fi shenanigans and monster brawls. <laughs> It helps that the film also has a sizable cast of above-average characters who keep you invested in the story. Megumi Odaka is given a lot more to do this time as Miki Sakusa, and Kasuke Toyahara as Terasawa is a charismatic and likable leading man. Anna Nakagawa is very charming as Emi, a Japanese woman from the future, torn between her mission and her affection for her homeland. Perhaps the most iconic character, though, is the android M11, played by American actor Robert Scott Field, whose distinctive look and physicality makes him very memorable. There are also some notable familiar faces, the most significant being Yoshio Tsuchiya as Shindo, a businessman who is saved by Godzilla in World War II and views him as a savior. It's a welcomed return from one of the Showa era's most memorable actors, and he gets to shine in one of the film's most powerful moments. With regards to special effects, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah continues to up its game, improving upon the accomplishments of the last film. Godzilla looks even better and is more expressive, and King Ghidorah is brought to life with greater fluidity than ever before. The film adds an extra twist to the classic monster by bringing him back as Mecha King Ghidorah, who is an even more impressive sight. The battles between the monsters are rather short but explosive, and are all the more dramatic because they are integral to the plot. Director Kazuki Amori continues to bring a more modern, western style to the series, embellishing the film with a tight pace and lots of action. This is enhanced by the return of the master Akira of Fukube, whose score is a combination of old and new themes that perfectly fits the tone of the film.
The biggest blemish of the film is that it is riddled with inconsistencies and plot holes. The use of time travel is always a tricky plot device in fiction, and Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah is especially sloppy with it. Rules are established only to be forgotten, and if you think about the plot too hard, it falls apart into absolute absurdity. The film also isn't quite as polished as the previous entries, containing some rough-looking special effects shots, with Ghidorah in particular looking rather stiff and awkward when flying. These are all minor issues, though. Overall, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah is another high-quality entry into the second era of Godzilla films. It throws a ton of new and interesting ideas into an engaging, if convoluted, plot that is at its heart about Godzilla, and is thus a treat to anyone with an affection for the character. It is a true blockbuster, a film that hides its deeper ideas within an action-packed and dramatic story that can be enjoyed on the most basic of levels. It doesn't always make sense, but Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah is packed with so much quality kaiju content that you'll be having too much fun to care. For more reviews and opinions on all things Godzilla, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths.